Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Well, since we've been hearing the news already, and we're still facing it, with the most recent pandemic known as coronavirus, that started in China, and it was going to continue to spread like worldwide, like the U.S. or Italy or any other, which I know this is starting to sound pretty scary too just thinking about it. I mean, even though we had dealt with all these other flu viruses like SARS, um, swine, bird, Ebola, all come to mind. There, there's even the measles too. That was another one. But I just pray for, for all the victims around who suffered. I know the media is like hyping it all down to our throats. I mean, I, I just heard that actor Tom Hanks, along with his wife Rita Wilson, may have caught it. I mean, I hope they, they survived for that. I mean, I'm not so sure. Maybe it might be something else. But they were basically doing like a movie in Australia. And I know they canceled a lot of events. Like, they had to delay the James Bond film, No Time to Die, to November. Um... They even tried to delay some other stuff too. They even canceled some Comic Cons and the NBA playoffs. Um, and not to mention shut down all these campuses, college campuses and universities. Oh boy. And of course they advise us to stay at home. Don't uh, shake your hands and you know wash your hands. Use something more protective like wearing a mask or, you know, hand gloves or anything, I mean, you know, they're, they're getting taught by this ship, by the governments and all that, and, you know, we have to hear this crap a lot, but, as Colonel Sam Daniels, played by Dustin Hoffman, has said, we're in deep fucking shit, and we're already in deep fucking shit, and I'm talking about the movie, Outbreak from 1995, which is now celebrating its 25th anniversary. And interesting enough, I just watched this on Netflix. <laughs> and <laughs> on their streaming charts, it's actually on top number six by far. Um, I actually had seen this movie in theaters at nine years old, or going on ten. And I remember this film being incredibly intense. You know, it's a medical thriller about an airborne virus called Metabla, um, which is like Ebola, only much worse. But basically, it is Ebola that suddenly came directly from Zaire, Africa, which at this rate, the host may be an African monkey that's causing the, the disease to spread including a small town called Cedar Creek which is a fictionalized town in Northern California and I remember this was based on the book by Richard Preston called The Hot Zone which focuses on the Ebola virus that was going around uh, they were actually going to do a second movie based on that as well, which is going to be the, the real adaptation of what it seems to be, called Crisis in Hot Zone, which was going to have Robert Redford, Jodie Foster, among other cast members. You know, But that got cancelled. Never happened. So eventually, um, Outbreak 1, you know, for Warner Brothers, by director Wolfgang Peterson, He's been best known for giving us films like Das Boots, The Never Ending Story, which I know had a controversy at the time, but still one of the best uh, adaptations of a popular book. And I know they had sequels to follow. He also did uh, In the Line of Fire, which has Clint Eastwood, um, 
John Malkovich, uh, Dylan McDermott, and of course Rene Russo, who's in this movie. Um, and also went on to do other films like Air Force One with Harrison Ford and Gary Oldman, as well as um, The Perfect Storm with George Clooney, Mark Wahlberg, and Mary Elizabeth Massa Antonio. And the last film, American film, or Poseidon, which is basically a remake of the Poseidon Adventure with Kurt Russell and Richard Dreyfuss. Uh, anyway, I actually went to see this movie with my family, including my father, uh, because um, they were very interested in it. Um, apparently, because my father did talk about this, uh, I think because maybe he did read the book later on. Um, he actually bought me the book um, of the hot zone. Uh, I think uh, a long time ago on my birthday he also gave me a DVD of Raging Bull. So that was a nice present. Uh, I do have the book still but it's somewhere in one of my uh, drawers so I can't take it out. Um, I actually did enjoy the film though but it did scare me. <laughs> as a nine-year-old because I was afraid that you know this would happen and boy especially in this recent um, outbreak that's going around I mean I'm I am scared and I've been scared um, several times I'm just hoping this will be gone as soon as we know it but I'm doing my best not to panic because you know I'm doing exactly what I should be doing you know but I have been washing my hands I've been taking a shower, I've been doing all this other stuff and I am staying at home hoping to be okay but you know I'm just hoping that it's not spreading here even though they claim that it's spreading over in California but that's what I'm worried about because I want to live you know I want to live this long and I want to continue to do whatever I want to do as soon as possible and plus I'm you know, I don't, I don't want to die. You know, I'm, I don't want to, I mean, I've been sick, you know, two months ago, and I got better from that. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you know, my family's sick for right now, but I'm hoping they'll get better. I just pray that it's not that virus. I think it's, it might be just a normal cold because of the weather that's going around. You know, it's been raining. Okay. Um, but I actually remember enjoying it, though, despite of that, being scary. And, and it has a nice cast. I mean, you know, not only you got Dustin Hoffman, but you got Rene Russo, uh, Morgan Freeman, Donald Sullivan, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., Patrick Dempsey, yeah, who's always been best known for, for the, the film Can't Buy Me Love, but then went on to do a lot of stuff like for example Grey's Anatomy when he plays McDreamy and of course Enchanted you know with Amy Adams and and James Marsden along with Susan Sarandon love that movie and of course Kevin Spacey which I know is becoming more controversial these days but back then um, he was a great actor um, he wasn't exactly well known until, surprisingly enough, the same year. He was doing The Usual Suspects, which got him the Oscar for that. Um, but he had been in several films even before that. Um, so I, even I already know who he was. And I always thought he was a great actor. But I know it's going to be pretty hard to say that, though, now in recent years but but let's just keep it that way but also he did won two awards both uh, New York Film Critics Circle Awards and Society of Texas Film Critic Awards yeah for Best Supporting Actor so that was interesting to hear um, and they also had JT Walsh uh, who's no longer with us but the rest of the cast you know basically unknowns or or were knowns, or they have moved on. So, um, 
So, this was a hit um, when it came out on March 10th, 1995, um, which, interesting enough, um, did focus on a real-life outbreak in Obala. So it does feel more realistic than ever. And the budget was like $50 million, but it only made $189.8 million. So did it right. I mean, keep this in mind, this was 1995, you know, this was a whole different um, time, you know, when movies, you know, were, were struggling or movies that were actually doing so well. Not something like what, what's going on today where every movie has to make billions of dollars worldwide. Yeah. But, but it's hard to believe that this film is now relevant to this day. Okay, so let's start. Stars Dustin Hoffman, Rene Russo, Morgan Freeman, Donald Sutherland, Kevin Spacey, Cuba Gooden Jr., Patrick Dempsey, Zach Smokai, Susan Lee Hoffman, Benicio Martinez, Bruce uh, Jarchow, Dale Dial, and J.T. Walsh. It's uh, written by Lawrence Dorette along with Robert Roy Poole, yeah, which is based on the book by Richard Preston called The Hot Zone, and it's directed by Wolfgang Peterson. The movie began set in the African jungle in 1967 during the Kasangi Mutinies, a virus known as the Matabla, which is basically the Ebola, which causes a high deadly fever, having all these soldiers around that have been sick, affected, or worse, dying. Yeah, they had all these blood eyelid shots, you know, some blood, bruises, and those red dots on their faces. I mean, it's as deadly and powerful as ever. They may think of it as an airborne virus. So that's, but to keep it secret, they brought in two U.S. Army officers, Donald McClintock and Billy Ford, both played by Donald Sullivan and Morgan Freeman. Now, at first, um, they decided to bring in the military uh, shipments and, and planes around, you know, the helicopters to see if they can send out all the supplies so that way they'll be able to find a cure for all of them but it turns out that they sent out a bomb to destroy them all you know wiping them out with this huge blast it does have those CGI effects that they blend in you know with all of them you know blasting out only left are just the African Chump Chon monkeys, yeah, capuchin monkeys. Uh, yeah, it's amazing because they did use some CGI technology on certain scenes, and I'm going to get to that later. Um, as we flash forward to the present day, which was 1995, we meet Colonel Sam Daniels, played by Dustin Hoffman, who is a U.S. armed biologist at a uh, local campus, you know, where you see all the scientists and doctors around, you know, trying to, uh, you know, do some testing, you know, finding some other cures and all these other diseases that we had. Um, they did mention Ebola and they mentioned all these other kinds of diseases like anthrax and all. He is being sent to investigate an outbreak in Zyar, Africa. He joins him with his crew, which is Lieutenant Colonel Casey Scholler, played by Kevin Spacey, and a new rookie recruit, Major Salt, played by Cuba Gooding Jr. By gathering information, you know, they, they went inside, they had to wear all these yellow suits for protection, so they can experience all these victims around inside the hospital room. And just as we know it, um, they were shocked. But they 
the doctor did explain to them that it wasn't an airborne virus. It was just just some rare disease that just spread around. But once they find out for sure, they're hoping there's, there's going to be a way. Um, Ford, on the other hand, is now a Brigadier General. And he's now becoming the superior officer for Sam. By dismissing the latter fears that the virus will spread around, little did we know is that it turns out that Betsy, who's a, a white-headed Chapuchin monkey, who happened to be the host, can be, or it should be, the one who started the virus. It's being smuggled into the country brought in by a worker from an animal testing laboratory named Jimbo Scott, played by Patrick Dempsey. Um, which, um, you know, he was, he kind of looks almost like, you know, one of those young, uh, <laughs> you know, rockers or so. Um, he came by, he puts uh, Betsy in the cage, but then, you know, he's just making contact and then suddenly spits water at his face, and now he was ready to become you know, very sick and infected, especially when after he was about to send um, the shipment and be able to go straight to the pet store to meet uh, Ruby Alvarez, played by uh, David Chadaus. Um, I forgot to mention his name. It's okay. But he's a pet store owner at Cedar Creek, California. Um, the monkey actually scratches his arm. Yeah, blood was coming out. And little did we know, they were ready to get sick. That's what happened to um, Jimbo when he was taking a plane flight to meet his girlfriend, Alice. And by the time he was eating his plane food, um, that kid was just going around getting the cookie just when he was already taking a bite out of it. And he told him, you can have it, but he was already, you know, getting all these red shots on his eyes. Thank goodness, because he would be affected. And when he came by, you know, he he was already in a tremor. Just when he got out of the plane, and you know, with his girlfriend, Alice, and now they've been shocked, and they've been affected completely. Same goes with Ruby, which then they were taken to the hospital, you know, they put inside the rooms, you know, all covered up, you know, using the uh, the curtains so they be, so they won't spread around. You know, with all the doctors, you know, putting their mask and and all their yellow or blue um, suits that they had to go on to protect themselves. Apparently, yep, he was dying, and he died later. Same goes with her. Yeah, and that sucks. And then Ruby died, and then the hospital technician was taking their samples of their blood, and then it squirts around his face, which led to the movie theater scene, when he was going out with his wife, or his girlfriend, perhaps, and then they were about to see uh, a classic movie, and, and that's where he started coughing, and all this um, particles was shooting up through the projectors, yeah, you know, if you go to movie theaters, you, you know, you see a lot of uh, that projector room where it goes all the way through the movie screen. All these particles were shooting up. It was going directly into all the audience's mouth. And then next thing you know, he got out. He started coughing right in front of everyone. And, and he just fell you know, with all that popcorn. So now... To make matters worse, everyone have gotten the spread, and it's a major chaos. So now they all died, or some of them were still living, but they're under it. The illness is being investigated by Dr. Roberta Cudog, uh, played by uh, Rene Russo, who happens to be uh, Daniels' ex-wife. Yeah, they, they were divorced uh, years ago, or perhaps a year. They were working together as a team, 
Uh, she's, of course, a CDC scientist, um, but determines that oh, just by going to a flight in Boston, because, you know, they were talking about an argument about the dogs, you know, are they going to keep them there? Are they going to have them safe there? Or maybe I'm going to go there or not. And there's like so many complaints, you know, it's too much. It gets, an, it gets really annoying. Um, he, she begins to find out if anyone in Boston was affected or sick, but apparently they were lucky until they got the message from Cedar Creek. So now, Ford provides an experimental serum that will cure the original strain that happened. Because they realized that the the other strain, which is the new one, could actually cure that part. Because that's how they showed the demonstration of the Metabla, you know, dating back from 1967 to the present time. And yeah, that is the Ebola. Um, Sam, of course, was being aware that the virus can spread before the outbreak of cures. They learned that they had to use an Operation Clean Sweep, which is a plan for the military operation to actually have everyone in a major lockdown, you know, go back inside their houses so they could be safe. But if one of them are getting infected and or sick, they had to bring him in into the elementary school to have them blood tested out to see if any of them might either be negative or positive. And eventually they all became positive when Casey, you know, had to look right through the telescope. Of course, he was getting pretty tired too. And yeah, I know they were joking around. I mean, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, because and Sam finally got a good night's sleep. I mean, it was pretty hard having to work, you know, 48 hours or so. I mean, suddenly um, he was on the, the blue suit and it actually ripped open. Yeah, this is another example why these suits are, are way too fabric that they can rip out the clothing and then it's going to let out all this virus that's going to spread. So he went over there to the room, get sanitized. And yes, he even said to uh, Robbie that I hate the Willies. They should be called Sam's. <laughs> uh, there was another moment too when he was talking to Sam, you know, joking around, saying that, you know, I hate this bug. Should we have it for dinner? <laughs> yeah, a lot of humans. Of course. Yep, and Sam also warns uh, Billy about uh, what was going to happen over there in Cedar Creek because. 19 of them are dead, 100 of them will be more, so now, if they don't do anything about it, we're going to be in deep shit, and we're already in deep shit, as I explained. <laughs> um, anyway, um, McClintock, on the other hand, the Major General, already, who's now planning on using a biological weapon so they'll be able to wipe out the virus, you know, killing, killing everyone in sight because they sent out the bomb before. So they figured this will definitely end it there. And also preventing Daniels to finding the cure, which is going to be the anti-serum. Um, and McClintock's orders was to have him arrested for carrying the virus. That's what they fought. But reality, though, because now that Casey was already, you know, sick and infected, um, now... Robbie, on the other hand, who was trying to inject him with the serum, but he, he was already causing a tremor, accidentally uh, got st stick into the needle of her index finger, and that's she was about to wash it off with iodine and water. Yeah, I mean, she got completely scared and furious. She wanted to stand, so now she got sick. She had to stay in bed. And now both um, Sam and Salt were about to go on their own, trying to locate where this monkey is, which is Betsy, because that's when um, he was going straight to the, well, first he went, they went all the way to um, San Francisco to 
trying to warn everyone about this, trying to get all the information. Yeah, and joking around thinking that now they're already been <laughs> caught in the virus, but they're no, they're not sick. And the next thing you know, um, they went all the way to uh, the location of the ship. You know, that's where they took the monkey at sea. Uh, they realized that one person already got sick and probably died already. So now they're trying to find the, the photograph of this monkey so they'll be able to show it on the news since they're already reporting them. So they, they make contact warning them that if you find this monkey, don't touch it. Just call the number right now from Atlanta Disease Control and that way you know they're going to come right over to stop it. And they did. That's where they found out that Betsy that was already been let go by Jimbo just went all the way into the forest through the little girl's house. She's the one who actually noted um, Betsy and started making all these drawings of, of her thinking that yes she's going to be caught. Thank goodness she didn't get sick. But they're waiting for her to finally arrive and that's when um, Sam and of course with with salt, you know, bringing in the tranquilizer gun to tranquilize her, take it out, but they also try to put it on hold to um, delay the bombing under their orders, but they just said, no, screw that, let's just continue. But that's what led to a helicopter chase, so that way they could take the monkey, be able to create the anti-serum to actually uh, cure them all, as well as all the rest of the victims. There you have it. Very intense movie, um, but very excellent. Um, even watching it now, since it's 25 years later, um, it still gets to me completely. Uh, I thought the cast definitely nailed their performances very well, especially Dustin Hoffman's character um, as Sam Daniels. I mean, this is definitely his best role among other roles he's done. Out of all actors, I mean, I think he really took it. Along with Rene Russo, Morgan Freeman, I mean, he was great. I love that speech that he gave um, just to let out some warning. I mean, he, he always makes a lot of powerful speeches in movies. It was nice to see Cuba Gooding Jr. in this film. You know, this was at the time when he was doing the Boys in the Hood and, and Judgment Night, uh, among others, before he went on to win an Oscar for Jerry Maguire. Went on to do other works too. Um, he was perfectly cast um, as a rookie. I mean, yeah, there was a scene where he did vomit it uh, when he spotted one of the victims, including the one with with uh, the family and the son that were all infected. I mean, yeah, I can see everyone's reaction when they see something like this. Um. And uh, but I also love the moments between the two when when they're riding on the helicopter and yeah I love that uh, it was a small action scene moment but it was actually really cool because you know they're trying to stop these stop McClintock and the rest of his militaries to to send out the bombs and they're trying to uh, contact them telling them to abort this mission and they're trying to actually <laughs> decoy them by you know, shooting the, these rockets into the, the middle of that tree. So hoping they can, you know, they won't be able to track them down. So they have to hide at the bottom of that, tr that lumber truck. So that way they can get to the hospital as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, going back to the, uh, the moments um, at the, uh, the beginning with, where they used some CGI technology. Um, there was a scene where they show you the the air vents and you see it all the way up close because I know usually air vents are pretty dark but the way they did it was actually a perfect um, angle camera angle shot of that knowing that yes this is going to be the airborne virus as um, as Daniels had spotted it while wearing the yellow suit and they're all wearing all these protective yellow suits sometimes they wear ones with gas mask and all so they can protect themselves from being caught. Um, and um, 
Yeah, even the particles from the movie theater, as I mentioned, for the projection, and you see all the audiences, you know, starting to catch it. It was very scary. Um, and the blasts, of course, the explosion. I was like, wow, I mean, Wolfgang Peterson really knows all the technology that he was doing in his films in, in recent years, in the later years. I mean, before he stopped. Um, because, of course, you know, he did do In the Line of Fire, where he did use some, you know, digital technology on using the real-life footages and, and inserted it in into the film. Discovery of, of showing the disguise and of the killer. Okay, but back to this. Um, there is a melodramatic moment, and it is very sad, too, was where we saw a young woman who is the mother of two daughters and her husband who is about to be taken away to the military and it goes directly all the way you know through the elementary school and that's where we get to see her go all the way through the fields I mean she got injected by all these blood samples to make sure if she's you know negative or positive but apparently she was positive we never saw her again sadly I was just wondering if she, if she either survived or she actually died. And, and there's another sad moment with uh, Casey. I note that when I saw this movie in theaters, it was um, sort of supposed to be a funny moment, but also sad at the same time, where Casey was given his last words, but then at the end, um, Daniels um, actually, <laughs> actually smacks him in the cheek. I'm, I'm pretty certain people have remembered this scene if, if you had seen it in theaters a long time ago or even watched it on TV at the time because I'm not so sure if it's on the DVD but I'm not so sure if it's even on the Blu-ray either it sure wasn't on the Netflix airing the way I saw it so it looks like Warner Brothers must have cut that scene out I hate when they do that but that would have been a great moment I mean because sometimes they always insert some of the funniest moments in the film just to you know cheer ourselves up considering that we're in serious danger here um, that also led to that flaw that it had I mean it's like the, the one thing I didn't like however was when you know both Daniels and and was where both Sam yeah Sam Daniels and Roberta we're like fighting, bickering at each other. It gets really annoying really fast, irritating too. They're complaining about the dogs. And now they're complaining about the virus. And I'm like, yeah, they're, and they're trying to talk about, you know, when is she going to come back? Uh, like what day it is? I mean, because she has to go to Boston, you know, to do some more research on the virus. And they just couldn't make up their minds I mean come on man that that was just too much so I guess it just gets I guess the film just takes its running time to its toll another scene that I didn't like either was when a small town family driving with their trucks uh, along with their buddies they're trying to take a detour to escape from the military but then they got caught and they brought in their helicopters telling them that I'm going to give you a warning. If you don't go back inside, you're going to either get arrested or you're going to get shot down. And one thing leads to another. They did get shot down. And that was um, his buddy. So now they're being taken. Um, very messed up. I, I could take that scene out of this picture, but I know. So it was just a little bit of violence in there. It's a nitpick. I mean, it obviously could have been Obala anyway that they should have mentioned, but I know they're trying to save their grounds for the script, especially when it already had mentioned Obala in the film. So, it's, um, even in that particular scene where they were doing some testing between the disease that happened in 1967 or what happened now, you know, just to see the difference here. Or they even talk about, you know, all the past uh, outbreaks, like the 1918 the Spanish outbreak that, that happened. 
or any other um, past flus that they were going to deal with. That sort of thing. And there's even a moment with J.T. Walsh, you know, who's the, the chief of staff, you know, who's, who's definitely given a, a very intense speech where he's telling them that they got to find a way to destroy it. That's why they send out all these photographs of all these victims. Yeah. And and the victims themselves, I mean, given they they got some very impressive makeup job, you know, putting all the blood shots. Uh, yeah, you see blood coming from their eyes and all these spots all over around, you know, all this makeup. It definitely looks totally realistic the way they did it. Um but you re and it's not a horror film, okay? I mean, it does feel like that, but it's not. And of course, the film is R-rated. I mean, mostly because of language, you know, like the F bombs. I mean, if that was the case, it would have been PG-13, but it's not. I mean, it, it would have been good for a PG-13 rating, but I know there's already another film like that called Contagion, that was directed by Steven Soderbergh. You know, with Matt Damon, Marianne Cotillard, Lawrence Fishburne, Brenna Paltrow, you know, that film. Which, that one was more dramatic. You know, focusing on a worldwide uh, virus, which, that's also relevant. Which is also very sad and depressing. If, especially if you haven't seen it. Um, but I, I love Steven Soderbergh, he's a great director. That's another film that it would definitely be worth checking out because of what's going on. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, virus-type um, movies that we had, even miniseries, yeah, like The Hot Zone, that's also based on the book. And I know there have been several of TV movies, too. Even There's even the one movie with Jeff Speakman called Deadly Outbreak. Uh, that was a... I think it was a direct-to-video film, but has not received a DVD or Blu-ray. Um, yeah, I don't think it would ever was on DVD at all. Yeah. Um, Outbreak, on the other hand, had been on Blu-ray. It came out in 2008. Yes, there actually was a Blu-ray, not just the one overseas, which is basically the same transfer. But maybe if I ever find the movie, I'll, I'll pick it up. Um, if I could. I mean, hopefully, but if that ever does happen, because it's not easy finding all these titles, um, I hope, but with that aside, um, I pray for the victims who have suffered from coronavirus, yeah, and and it, I do feel bad for the, the other ones who have died, it, it's very scary, I know, I mean, it's, it's even hard not to think about it, but I'm doing my best not to, but just hoping that, you know, there will be a cure, and I know there are getting cures already, I mean, they're already stopping this virus, so let's just hope that within months, maybe a lot shorter, I mean, this will all disappear, so stay safe, don't panic, and pray for a recovery and a miracle and just move on to what we're usually doing so that's the case so anyway that's outbreak and i give the movie four and a half stars i'm joseph a sabora and i'll see you later bye